Come on in. Welcome to Opening the Door to Diabetes. Uh, welcome again, and in this episode we're going to be discussing what on earth do we do with all this information because I'm going to be asking you to test your blood before each meal and at bedtime as a minimum as we start with your treatment. The key is number one to be organized. So what you need to do is to organize the numbers by meal times or time of day. So what I do is I look at all of the breakfast numbers I average them, and I also measure something called a standard deviation, which is a measure of scatter. And I do that for breakfast, lunch, supper, and bedtime. So at the bottom, I've got an average blood sugar for the time of day, plus an estimate of how reliable that blood sugar or repeatable that blood sugar is. And that's where the standard deviation calculation is, is so critical. And I'm gonna ask you to write down your blood sugars in this diary this diabetes diary, so that we've got all of the sugars in a fairly organized fashion that we can have a good look at any trends that are occurring. Okay, but that's kind of old school. It is. It is old school, and you know what? Um, it does work, but we have the other options as well. Now, with all of these new meters, the great advertisement is they all have memories. But just because you have a memory doesn't mean you've got the data organized. So one of the best ways to organize data is to use a readily available internet platform called CareLink where you can upload your meter to CareLink and you can get a very organized report which has all of the stuff that I need. That's the average blood sugar for time of day plus the standard deviation and also the number of tests. Another option is to use one of our Excel spreadsheets. That you can download from the internet. You can't upload your, uh, your uh, tester into it, but you can put in the data manually and get the same information. And here's the example of that Excel spreadsheet, very similar uh, to the, the Carolink report. Again, this has to be manually recorded, and then uh, all of the calculations which are done by the Excel spreadsheet. Again, this has to be emailed as an attachment. And lastly, if you don't want to have to worry about Microsoft Office or whatever with Excel or in cutting and pasting reports, you can go to our website and register. And then all you do is to go to the website and type in the numbers and then press a button and it's sent to your caregiver. In this case, it's me, but uh, anybody could uh, be sending to their doctor using the site. Do you have an example of what you would do once you see the numbers? Yeah, let's look over here on, on the screen. I've got a number of reports here that I use as examples. So here's a patient who's reported to me, and you can see that this patient has got a very nice blood sugar in the morning, and you can see the standard deviation is quite low, yet during the day the blood sugar is very high. But the standard deviations are low as well. So I can say reliably, whatever that patient's doing in order to control their fasting blood sugar is okay, and they need more therapy during the day. And that would be in the form if this patient was on regular insulin shots before each meal, just by increasing their insulin at meal time. This next patient's the reverse. There's a really high blood sugar. It's averaging 14 in the morning. The standard deviation is 2.5, but during the day, it's great. And I happen to know that this patient's on an insulin pump. So this is really easy because all I need to do is to change the basal rate on that pump. In other words, give them more insulin overnight, and that'll lower the, the fasting blood sugar, and they'll be in well-controlled territory. Here's a patient uh, who's uh, created most of the gray hair that I have. You can see that the blood sugars are fairly high, but as well, the standard deviations are quite high. There's no rhyme or reason with this person. They're all over the map, and it's not just the insulin that they're taking. It's based on lifestyle. Uh, they're not having their, um, the same meals, they're not having meal timing, they're exercising randomly, they're not organized. So it would be um, very foolish of me to change uh, that person's medication or insulin regimen 
because the data is not reliable. So a message I would send back to that patient is please pay more attention to meal timing, uh, meal content, and your exercise program. Gotcha. So as you can see with an organized uh, approach to dealing with this data, it does simplify the advice that we can give patients in managing their diabetes. Okay, that sounds good. How are you going to report, Nelson? I'll probably report to you using um, the online website. Sounds really easy and convenient. I don't have to worry about having to get software for it. All right. Well, you've uh, you've got our coordinates, and uh, I'm expecting your first report next week. <laughs>